It's been three hundred years, right down to the day. Now Billy's back, and there's hell to pay. In today's Halloween tutorial, I'm going to be recreating Billy Butcherson's makeup from probably the best Halloween movie ever, Hocus Pocus. This makeup was originally done by Tony Gardner and Alterian Studios, and Chet Czar actually sculpted the original Billy. I've been wanting to recreate this makeup for a very long time, and it was a perfect chance when my friend Edwin asked me to do it on him. So I decided to bring in my friend Amanda, who helped out a lot, and we just kind of all three collabed and brought this project together. We also had the chance to demo this makeup at Nocturnal Designs booth at Monster Palooza, and not only was Chet Czar the sculptor of Billy at Monster Palooza, but so was Doug Jones, who was the actor, the original Billy Butcherson, who played Billy in the movie. He was there. We got to take pictures. It was really, really awesome. My mom was there and she got to see me do a big makeup and she actually filmed all this footage for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started with this video. This whole process started when we live casted Edwin. Amanda and I did this on a Sunday, I believe, and we actually did it in my kitchen and it worked out pretty well. After we had that positive, we were able to start sculpting. So Amanda tackled the hands and she did a beautiful job on those. Then I sculpted the face and neck piece. Later on that week, I went ahead and molded both of the pieces. I did just a simple basket mold, which I've shown in a video, and then I also did a simple flat mold for the hands. Next, we needed to run some foam, but the process of running foam is a bit tricky when you don't have a foam oven. Luckily enough, we were able to run foam at Sig's house. We have to say thank you so much to Sig. I'm gonna link him below too, he's an amazing artist but he let us run foam in his garage. Now I'm gonna start pre-painting the foam pieces that we ran. I did use Pax Paint to color the foam pieces, and Pax Paint is basically prosade mixed with acrylic paint, and you can color it to whatever color you want. It's basically a 50-50 ratio. And I mixed up three different colors for this. I mixed up a darker green, a mid-tone green, and then a pale green. I'm painting with a technique called dry brushing, where you lay down your darker color first to get all the details in the cracks, and then you paint a lighter color on top. So the darker green is going to be in all the creases and wrinkles, and the lighter green is going to be the highlight shade. It's definitely just highlight and contour. With all paint jobs, you want to take a step back and look at it from far away. And at this point, it looked a little too green to me, so I decided to mix up a light yellow Pax paint and brush it over the highlights of the prosthetic. And once all the prosthetics were based out with that Pax, I went in and splattered a bit using alcohol palettes. And actually, I only used one alcohol palette. It's the Necromania palette from PPI, which is one of my favorite palettes, and it worked beautifully for Billy. I did use the Fine Artist Brush to go in and define some of the hollows as well. And here is a photo of the finalized pre-paint. Next, Amanda, Edwin, and myself got our butts to Burbank and set up our makeup for the demo at Nocturnal Designs booth. I do have to give a special shout out to Nocturnal Designs. They helped a lot with this demo. And they also make incredible horns. I've actually used their horns in my Michael Hussar tutorial. I do apologize for this part being a little shaky. I did not bring my tripod. So my mom was filming this and it was kind of hard to keep it steady. I also apologize for not getting the initial application of the prosthetic down. But at this point, we've just glued down the centerpiece of the prosthetic. Then we're working our way outwards towards the side of the face and just prosating the prosthetic down. If you want a more in-depth video of this, probably my Sea Monkey tutorial would be one of those, or even my American Werewolf tutorial would be a good one to check out. We also made sure that we applied glue to the entire surface of the skin and the prosthetic. That way when Edwin moves his face, there aren't any weird wrinkles or areas where the prosthetic hasn't adhered to the skin. At this point, Amanda and I attacked Edwin with Q-tips, which can be the hashtag of this video, attack with a Q-tip. And um, basically we're just blending down the edges. 
We started by prosating down the edges using Q-tips, and then we used a mixture of spirit gum and alcohol, which is a 50-50 mixture, and applied that to the edges as well, just to kind of blend them down. And we also use Bondo on any of the rough edges, and that's just a mixture of prosade and fumed silica. For the hands, we did the same process that we did on the face. We just applied prosade and blended down the edges. You do want to powder, especially between the fingers, because your fingers will stick together otherwise. It's time to start the paint job. Me and Amanda moved right along into this, and we're using a Pax paint and stippling it onto any of the areas of Edwin's skin that's going to be showing. We tag teamed him on the paint job, so as Amanda would do something, I would do something simultaneously. Just makes the process go a little faster. We were both using the Necromania palette to create more contrast to the makeup. I used Dark Moss to continue the idea of wrinkles around his neck. And Amanda was using Lividity to add depth to any of the sculpted hollows on the prosthetic. And to match the pre-paint, we did go ahead and splatter again, because it's so much fun. To deepen those eye sockets, we used a combination of grease paint as well as some eyeshadows from Saucebox's Etude palette. Just painted the lid and painted the sockets a darker brown color, and then applied the eyeshadow on top. Looks like Edwin has a little bit of RZF here, resting zombie face. We repeated the painting process on Edwin's hands, and I feel so bad for him because having prosade all over your hands is not fun. The things we do for art. Next I'm going to give him some guy liner because Billy's got some dark circles and I'm just using an eyeliner to line his waterline as well as his top lid and bottom lid. For the nails, Amanda applied some fake nails to Edwin's hands and painted them using the alcohol palette. And while she was doing that, I applied his stitches to the mouth using just a black cord and some prosade. Just put prosade on the end of the cord and stuck it into the holes that I sculpted. We wigged him up and added his costume. The costume was actually a jacket that Edwin had, and I just hot glued that Halloween gauzy fabric onto it. And he also bought these little lace like neck cuff and arm cuffs on Amazon for like $5, which we just distressed with a little bit of fake spray dirt from PPI and some acrylic paints. The wig was also Edwin's. He was Edward Scissorhands last year, so he just used his Edward Scissorhands wig and added some extensions in the back to make it look more Billy-like. Once we finished, the real fun began. We got to go walk around the floor of Monster Palooza, and we ran into Doug Jones, who was the original Billy, and he taught our Billy to be Billy. It was quite a surreal moment. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was such an honor to be able to recreate Billy's makeup and I couldn't have done it without my team. And a huge thank you to anybody who helped out. It was such a blessing and such, a, such an awesome experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure you subscribe for more Halloween tutorials. Otherwise, check out my Winifred Sanderson tutorial or my other zombie tutorial. I'll see you very soon in my next video. Take care, bye.